Hey guys, this is Jacob from Venture Addicts, and in today's tutorial, we're gonna recreate JR Alley's blink distortion effect from his latest video, The Guatemala Story. JR is one of the best in the game right now. Make sure you give the original video a watch, then give him a follow and subscribe. And after this, check out the last video we did about him when we recreated his curtain pull transition. Before we start, let's take a look at the scene and we'll reverse engineer what exactly is going on frame by frame. So besides all the blinking, let's take a good look at the image. If you look at the bottom left and pay attention to that yellow circle, you can see as the video gets longer, it starts to spread out and just get more distorted. Pretty much everything in the image is doing that. It's just very noticeable there. Um, all we have to do is kind of an RGB split, really simple effect, we'll cover that. You can also notice that the image is getting blurrier and brighter as it goes on. So I think we'll just keyframe a simple blur and some highlights there. And then lastly, the blinking, we're just gonna get a couple of color mats, black color mats, feather the edges, and we'll just keyframe them up and down just to replicate that blinking. Pretty simple effect overall. So let's jump into Premiere and check it out. If you'd like to use that video I took of Mac for this tutorial, just click that Dropbox link below and you can download the original file. So the first thing we're gonna do is click on the video of Mac. We're gonna go up to Opacity and we're gonna change the blend mode to Linear Dodge Add. Then we're gonna go up to the effects. We're gonna type in color and we're gonna scroll down and look for color balance RGB. Drag it on top of the Mac video. And then holding down Shift Alt or Shift Command, we're gonna drag one copy up and then a third copy up. Starting with the top one, we're gonna go up here and we're gonna set red to 100, green zero, blue zero. Go to the second clip, red zero, green 100, blue zero, and then red zero, green zero, and then 100 on blue. Some reason it goes to 39, but basically every single file should have its own 39. And if you click the eyeballs on and off, this one should be blue, this one should be green, and then this one should be red. And with all three of them showing, you shouldn't see a difference. So in JR's scene, you could see in the first few frames, it looks pretty normal and then it gets progressively more distorted as you go on. You can see the colors are starting to split the further it goes in. The easiest way to achieve this look is to set our different layers at different speeds. So we're gonna keep this bottom one at 100% duration and then we're gonna go to the second one and let's change it to just 98. And then the third one, do 96. So you can see at the end of the clips here, it adds just a little extra time. So in the beginning of the first few frames, it looks pretty normal. And then as you go on further, you start to see the color split and just get way more hectic. And it should look something like this. So once you got that look, I'm just gonna cut these down over here, highlight all three of these, and I'm gonna nest it. Said okay. Next, we're gonna throw on a couple other effects just to replicate it. So you can see it starts to get a little blurrier. So we're throwing a Gaussian blur and it looks like it gets a little brighter. See, it's, it's pretty much washed out here at the end, but in the beginning you can see it. So let's go to the first frame. I go up to effects. I'm gonna type in Gaussian blur. Throw it on top the nested sequence. I'm gonna hit the stopwatch on blurriness. I'm gonna go to the last frame and I'm gonna set it to about 20, just add a little bit of blur. And so now it'll just get blurrier and blurrier as it goes. Go to the first frame again. We're gonna go up to effects, just type in color, find Lumetri color, drag it on the nested sequence. Let me hide these real quick. Toggle down basic correction and we're gonna do the stopwatch on highlight. Again, let's go to the last frame and let's set the highlights to 100. And this will kind of wash out everything a little bit. And so you can see the sky here looks fine. And then as it goes on, it gets a lot brighter and more distorted. So when you play it back, it should look a lot like this. Lastly, all we have to do is the eyelids. So I'm gonna go back to the first frame here and let's go to the project, right click, new item, color mat. I want it to be a little wider, so I'm gonna do 2100 by 1080. Everything else looks good, hit okay. Make sure it's black, okay, okay. 
Now I'm gonna drag this into the timeline, make it the same size, and when I hit on motion, and you'll see the blue lines just go a little bit out the frame, and that's just gonna help later when we're using a feather on a mask. So I'm gonna go to 540, and I'm gonna change that to 1080. And that's gonna put it directly in the bottom half of our screen. I'm gonna go to opacity, hit this ellipse mask, and we should get a nice circle here. I'm gonna hold down shift, so I just know it stays somewhat in the middle like that. Let's go ahead and invert this, and let's just do a 30 feather. And I'm gonna click and hold the left side, hold down shift, just go a little bit out the frame, and do the same thing to the other side. Then let's make this a little bit skinnier. I'm gonna do it till just where the feathers are touching in the middle there. Just keep holding down shift to keep it aligned, nice and symmetrical. The look here, you kind of have like a simple little, very subtle eclipse to replicate an eyelid. So once it looks like this, I'm going to go down here and make another copy. Hold down Shift Alt or Shift Command. I'm going to click on it, click on the mask, click and hold and drag it down holding Shift. And then we're going to go up here, change 1080 to 0, and then find your mask and then bring it right on top of the line right here. So something like this, and we should have a nice little peaking eyelid right here. Lastly, all we have to do is keyframe the positions up and down just to replicate blinking. Just to replicate JR's effect, I'm gonna drag my two eyelids on top of his clip and we're gonna copy frame by frame the eyelids. So I'm gonna change the opacity of my eyelids to about 80% so I can see through it. And basically I'm just gonna go frame by frame and copy his motion. I'll just do a few keyframes and I'll speed through the rest because it's pretty simple. So first off, it's black for a few frames. So I'm just gonna go to right here when the eyelids start to open. I'll actually just bring my color mat down here and put it on top so now this is all black. So starting here, our eyelids should be pretty much the same. You can see it's right here in the middle. So I'm gonna go ahead and keyframe the position, hit the stopwatch for both of them, and I'm just gonna right click frame by frame. So you can see here it goes into the black bars. Let me just, I'm going to hit motion so I can see my blue. I'm going to drag it right into the black bars. Do the same for the top eyelid. All right, let's go a few more frames. All right, it's starting to come in again. So I'm going to go right before they come out. Hit the button here. Let me give myself some room real quick. Hit the button here. Same thing with the bottom eyelid. And then go a few frames. Okay, kind of does like a half blink there. Hit motion. Go up a little bit. Top motion all right go a few more frames okay it goes in here and i'm just going to keep doing this and replicating the effect of the blinking so i'll see you in a little bit let me just speed through this real quick all right i'm just on my last set of keyframes here you can see in this last blink he kind of has a fade to black here so just gonna get the eyelids closed one last time. Something like that should do. And I'm just gonna grab my color mat up here again. And let's see, let's go to the frame. Right when they're starting to close, I'm going to keyframe the opacity. So we're gonna start at zero. And you can see it gets blacker and blacker until it closes. So let's just go about here, hit 100. And so now we'll have it fade to black. So once you have all of your blinking keyframed, I'm gonna drag it back on top of my clip and it should look a lot like this. I'm gonna set the opacities back to 100. All right, so we should have some nice blinking. And just for a finishing touch, we're gonna to ease all of the keyframes. Let me just drag this out real quick. So click one of the eyelids and toggle down the position under motion and you should see all these plateaued graphs for the keyframes. We're gonna go ahead and highlight all of these. We're gonna right click, click on temporal interpolation, go to ease in, and we're gonna do it again, and go to ease out. And you should have these nice symmetrical mounds of keyframes now, and that's just going to have a nice acceleration on the blinking, make it look more realistic. Go to the other eyelid and do the same thing. Right click, ease in, Right click, ease out, make sure they're nice and symmetrical, looks good. And your finished product should look a little something like this.
So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any comments, let us know below. You can always message us on Twitter and Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe for new videos every week. Thank you.